So, here's my shield. I have clamped it to some planks to um, counter the slight wall pitch that was caused by uh, gluing on the hide. I have ironed down all the edges so they're all smooth and all fine, hardly any uh, wrinkles. And um, I have marked the outline of the handlebar and um, just to, in order to not get confused, I marked an, uh, an X on the bar here and on the board and the tiny circle here and on the board so um, that uh, when the glue is um, brushed on, uh, I can work swiftly because the open time of this hide glue is uh, pretty short. So. I'm using this uh, leather as a cushion so I don't get any uh, nasty marks on my nicely carved handle. Good. So I'm going to leave it until tomorrow and then I'm going to drill the holes for the nails and do the riveting. So the glue has dried and the handle is firmly in place and um, as you can see uh, it also straightens the board which was slightly flexing and there was a slight warpage and uh, now it's all straight. This is just wood glue that keeps it in place. As you can see, I have already drilled the holes for the nails to keep the handle in place and for the boss, which will be attached with uh, four nails. Bosses where I usually attach with four nails, sometimes five. On the Gokstad uh, shield it's um, six nails. With this shield, like with uh, some other examples, the nail, these two nails will pass through the flange of the boss and on the other side through the handle. Sometimes these nails were peened. I will go for the other system that is also authentic that is uh, using clench nails that means uh, they're going to be hammered back into the wood. Yesterday I attached these little rings here uh, for fixing a strap that would allow for carrying the shield on the shoulder. The system I used is also confirmed by archaeology. 
nails that uh, have like two shanks that are bifurcated and hold a little ring have been found in Birka. Now that I have drilled these holes, I'm going to use hand forged nails, such as these ones here. These nails uh, come in different lengths to make sure uh, to um, adapt to the different widths that they have to pass through, like uh, this apparently here. This will be the longest nails, and then um, as the handle tapers towards the end. I'm going to use smaller nails. The board, I just weighed it out. The board as it is now, that is um, the wooden planks that make up uh, the shield corpus, um, the wooden handle, plus the rings and um, the facing of rawhide and the glue, of course. Uh, keep in mind that um, paint and uh, glue adds weight too. This now weighs just a little under 2.7 kilograms. So with um, the nails and the boss, uh, it will probably come out at just, uh, um, just above three kilograms. This is exactly the weight that I strove for because um, having tried out uh, shields that Arthur von Eschen uh, recently replicated and reconstructed, I found that three kilograms is a really good weight. This shield is almost 90 centimeters in diameters. I think it's like 88 centimeters in diameter, so that's um, uh, well within the scope of original shields, or at least um, the finds that we do have. There is variation, and uh, when you look up uh, data for uh, shield sizes, keep in mind that um, there only are the Gottstadt shields and uh, a shield from Latvia, from Tirskom, um, which are complete. And, well, of course, maybe the one in Trelleborg, uh, Denmark. Um, all the measurements we get, we get from fragments of wood, sometimes even uh, the width of the grave, um, and fittings, nails, clench nails. So these are just indications, and be always careful when you read about statistics. Okay, so now for the boss. This boss here that I'm using, that I'm going to use on that shield, is a hand forged boss. It was made by Anders Helset from Oslo. He did it almost 10 years ago for me. Um, at the time he was working at the Oslo Archaeological Museum, so he was uh, in the restoration department and he had an original. Um, that he modeled this one on. This is uh, the one of the two main types that we see in the Viking Age. There's another type that has a, a recess here, like a neck. That is an earlier type, which was never really replaced. So this one here is hand forged and uh, we just uh, take a look at how much it uh, weighs. So this weighs 360 grams.
So now I'm going to um, bend this now. to create a little hook at the end that can be buried in the handle. So I have now attached the boss as well, which means the shield is um, readily assembled, it's actually battle ready by now. All it needs now is uh, oiling and um, painting the front. And uh, as you can see, I have also, I've also made an effort to smooth um, the edges so that there's um, a nice transition from the board into the cavity of the boss, allowing for a nice good grip. The grip you want to ensure is um, an elongated grip, allowing for the ha using the handle much like a thrusting weapon. And this kind of grip is also supported by the shape of the handle, the D-shape, giving a good rest, allowing um, for a good rest for the thumb as you thrust forward with the handle. All the nails have been hammered into the handle so that it makes for a smooth surface. So there's really no pointy bits or nothing that um, would get into the way as you slip your hand. Onto the handle.